Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Okay. Are we okay at the back? Everyone's okay? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Obviously, the Flood Commission of Inquiry Interim Report has been released this morning. The Premier has already uh, given a whole-of-government response, but I'm certainly happy uh, to talk about those recommendations which may relate to the Queensland Police Service. As you know, there's about 104 of the recommendations uh, of a total of about 175 that relate to the state government. And a number of those do relate to us uh, in the Queensland Police Service. In particular, um, there is a recommendation in relation to better training for our call takers in the, in the police communication centre role, uh, particularly to do with triple O calls. And uh, we accept that we have work to do in that area. And we have been working on that issue and will continue to develop up the appropriate training mechanisms. But uh, these were extraordinary times um, that we all faced. And certainly, I think the report also highlights that there was um, significant and very professional work done by emergency services generally. I'm happy to take any of your comments in relation to the, uh, the comments in the report. I'm sorry, could you... What is Senior Constable Wheeler doing? Uh, Senior Constable Wheeler is performing uh, duties uh, in the Toowoomba area. Uh, these are administrative mainly in nature and uh, he will continue to do that until such time as the disciplinary investigation is completed. That, that call was probably one of the most distressing elements of, of the entire flood inquiry and the process that came from that. Are you concerned about what that has done, that one instance, to the, the reputation of Queensland police? Um, certainly, uh, the very vast majority of our officers go to work every day simply to do um, their very, very best for the community of Queensland. Sometimes we don't get it quite right. And yes, a single incident can impact on the reputation of our organisation and we understand that. And that's why we have processes in place to deal with that. Uh, we have a discipline process which is currently underway um, and, that's, and it is underway, meaning that it is, the investigation is still ongoing. ongoing. So it's hard for me to comment on the specifics of the Wheeler matter uh, in that regard, but certainly we are taking action, as the Commission of Inquiry has recommended, to train all of our call takers, perhaps more appropriately, in, in dealing with those sorts of instances. I will also say, though, and I'll clarify, that I understand the Commission of Inquiry did accept that, um, that the nature of the call that was taken by Mr Wheeler was... Uh, in extraordinary circumstances, and they and that was accepted. But uh, I notice that the inquiry report does say that it that the response did not meet the standard that even we would expect. What changes to the training program are underway? The focus of the recommendation is for cons better and consistent training of call takers, um, understanding the situation uh, perhaps even better. Obviously, uh, our officers uh, do undertake some training, but the inquiry uh, certainly uh, demonstrated that there were variations in that training across the state and we need to be more consistent in that regard. But you said you started um, formalising a, a new training process. What, is, what does that mean? Absolutely. Well, I think part of it is uh, assisting our officers to understand perhaps uh, better the significant stress that individual callers are often under and, and then a process that we can elicit uh, more information from those people that is relevant to the particular case. Do you have the resources needed to do this new training? Do you need to ask for extra money from the government? No, we have a very uh, large training organisation within our within the Queensland Police Service and I am sure that uh, uh, we can uh, cope with the uh, type of training that's required. There, there is a time issue in, re in relation to this, um, obviously, and uh, we will look at that in the coming weeks. Season well, that's, that's going to be um, a critical time frame for us to uh, achieve this outcome. When you look at some of the recommendations in relation to things that specific councils might have to do and then their mm. level of organisation, mm. 
presumably that's going to put a significant additional burden on policing resources in some of those locations. Would you accept that? The, uh, my understanding of, of most of those uh, recommendations that relate to local government uh, will require significant work by our DDCs in particular, so our district disaster coordinators. These are the people who are officers in charge of the local districts. Um, certainly there is that issue, uh, but uh, as a result of the uh, review of disaster management arrangements in Queensland that occurred uh, some two years ago now, and, and, and of course we know that the uh, legislation changed last year, there was also the requirement for uh, executive officers. These are police officers who assist the district officer. We have numerous of those in place now as, as we uh, have moved through and implemented the, the review recommendations. They uh, specifically will be tasked with many of these tasks of dealing with those recommendations in conjunction with their local, uh, their local uh, disaster management group arrangements. Have you spoken with um, the family Speaking with John Tyson basically about um, what you're doing in terms of police training for you. Certainly, there was uh, a number of discussions with Mr. Tyson early in uh, early in the events. Um, I can't advise you whether or not we've been back to him of recent times, bearing in mind that the report was embargoed until today and was only released today. Um, but uh, there are there is the opportunity for us now to have that conversation. Do you intend to do that? Um, I'll certainly be talking to the local assistant commissioner in relation to that. What would, it, what would you say in this Oh, I think, it's, I think it's appropriate that he be make, made aware of exactly what we are going to do to try and improve our, our systems uh, and processes. What, what's your personal view on that, Paul? I have many personal uh, views on many things, um, but as I said to you earlier, this, uh, there is an ongoing discipline investigation. I may be uh, one of the decision makers in that process, uh, it is possible, uh, and therefore I don't intend to comment further on, on that process today. More broadly, what do you hope comes out of, of this report and how it can improve relations between police and the other emergency authorities? Um, I actually think we have uh, probably the best uh, relationships we could hope for with the other emergency services. I think there's a lot more work to be done in relation to interoperability. Um, uh, communication flows, that sort of thing. Um, and whilst the Commission of Inquiry recommendations haven't specifically looked at that at, on this occasion, that may be the focus uh, into the future because, as you know, uh, they have some months to run yet. Um, but uh, the relationship, the trust relationships that have built up between ourselves and the other emergency services, I think were fundamental and basic to the successes that we had uh, in managing the response and, and the recovery phases uh, to the flooding and cyclone and events of Christmas. Will you change the police boundaries to line up with the district? Um, we've, um, we have a project underway in relation to exactly that. Um, as many of you know, a couple of years ago the, uh, many of the councils were amalgamated and that has caused some changes in the boundaries uh, that we deal with. But at the end of the day, our operational boundaries, um, in other words, our district and regional boundaries in particular, uh, are fundamental to providing appropriate policing services. The legislation change that occurred after the 2009 review for the Disaster Management Act uh, has also given us the ability to be flexible with a boundary for a disaster. So if it occurs in a defined area, it doesn't matter where the disaster district boundary is, we can actually draw a line around it and have that approved and that becomes the disaster area. So there is great flexibility uh, with, the, uh, with the disaster area, um, but we see some benefit in wherever it is appropriate to align our district boundaries with current LGA. LGA, local government boundaries as well. And is the death toll still, from January 10th, is the death toll still three missing and 20 deceased? No, it's, uh, well, sorry, it depends which, which toll you're talking about. Um, I think the toll is 35 um, overall. Does that include the three missing? Uh, no, it doesn't. They're still not declared um, deceased. Mm. 
just in relation to the investigation still continuing to will it, does this now mean that we finalise now that we have the, the result of the final? Uh, certainly there are processes for that to go through. I will not give you an end date, I'm sorry, uh, in relation to that investigation, but it is ongoing. Um, and if the report found that the isolated communities did have trouble sourcing supplies, we spoke about it at the inquiry, but are there better procedures now in place or will there be better procedures to, to resupply people? Uh, one of the concepts... Uh, that was it was um, looked into by the uh, Commission of Inquiry and in fact uh, became obvious through the debriefs that were undertaken by the various agencies involved was this idea of potentially having stockpiles of equipment up and down the coast uh, so that we had you know for instance in the far north we would have a significant stockpile central region a significant stockpile and down here in the southeast um, that's being examined and, and my understanding is that the uh, facility in Townsville, um, as I understand it, is being um, supplied for just that eventuality. Uh, but these things do take a little time um, to organise and the logistics behind that uh, are quite incredible. So uh, when you think about what has to be there or not there. The, um, evacuation centres? The evacuation centres are a totally different um, uh, circumstance in many respects and um, there is a, a working party that's been looking at those uh, through emergency services uh, and perhaps uh, you could seek comment from them but um, we have been involved on that working party uh, to try and enhance uh, safety shelters, um, evacuation centres, um, the guidelines that um, sit around those. Folks, that looks like it. Um, thank you very much for being here today. Um, nothing else that you wish to discuss? No, thank you. It's always wonderful. Thanks very much.